The Task Manager in Windows is one of the most underappreciated tools. It's great for shutting down an app that's misbehaving, getting information on system processes, and checking on how your memory, CPU, and GPU are doing. Most of you watching probably know the basics, so instead I'll show you some of the lesser known tips and tricks when using the Task Manager. To launch the Task Manager, you could right click on an empty space in the taskbar and select it to open it up. To quickly launch the Task Manager without using your mouse, there's a couple keyboard shortcuts you could use. The first one is Control plus Alt plus Delete at the same time, which many of you already know about. Screen recording won't capture this, so I'll just tell you. This will take you to a black screen to select it from the list using the down arrow key and pressing Enter. Now here's a keyboard shortcut that's even quicker to open the Task Manager. Press the Windows key plus X. This menu is called the WinX menu. It's also known as the Power User menu. Immediately after this window opens, press the T key. When opening the Task Manager, it automatically opens to the Processes tab. Having too many programs that automatically launch when your computer boots up can slow down the startup process, so it's recommended to disable those programs you don't need at startup. I find most normal users don't know about this, so I'll include it. In the left pane, select Startup Apps. For those you know you don't need when your computer starts up, right-click on them and select Disable. So I'll disable Copilot, ShareX, and Spotify. If you had a bunch of these that were enabled that you have since disabled, you might notice the next time you boot up your PC that it starts up faster. If you ever need to open a program's file location quickly to make changes to any of the program's files or just want to know where it's located, you can get there quickly in the Task Manager when that program is opened. In the left pane, select Processes. For that program's file location that you want to locate, you may need to left-click the arrow to expand it then right click on any of the processes and select Open File Location. This will open File Explorer in a new window where that program's files are located. If you have the situation where files and folders are not responding, if the Start menu stopped working or the taskbar has disappeared, restarting Windows Explorer usually fixes these issues. To do this, select the Processes tab and over here on the right, select to have it listed by name. If you have a folder open, Windows Explorer will show up here in the Apps section. Otherwise, you'll have to scroll down to find it. Right-click on Windows Explorer and select Restart. I won't be doing this right now, but if you ever have this problem, doing this should fix the problem you're having. Most of you already know that if you have a program that's hung up or not working properly, that going into the Task Manager Processes tab, right-clicking on it and selecting End Task will usually force close that program. I've had many situations where this does not work. If you run into that situation, select Details in the left pane. Look in the list for the program you want to close. Right click on it and select End Process Tree. You'll get a pop-up window. Once again, select End Process Tree. This will force close that program and all related processes. If you have a computer with low memory or a processor that's not the latest and greatest, you might find it useful to allocate more resources to programs that are sluggish to make them run better. To set the priority level for any program, select Details in the left pane. Locate the program in the list that you want to allocate more resources to. Right-click on it. Hover your cursor down to Set Priority. You'll find that most programs are set to normal. Select the priority level you want to give to it. I recommend above normal or high. While real-time can give you the best performance, it can cause system crashes or instability. On the flip side, to allocate less resources to any program, select below normal or low. An alternative way to deprioritize a program is to select efficiency mode just above set priority. This will have Windows deprioritize it automatically to save resources as needed. If you want to see which apps or processes are using your network, whether it be wired or wireless, with detailed information, select the Performance tab here on the left. Click Wi-Fi or Ethernet here on the right. To see this with more detailed information, click the three-dot menu in the upper right and select Resource Monitor. Then click to expand the Network Activity tab. For each instance, it'll show you the process identifier, the address, which I'm hiding for obvious reasons, the data being sent and received, along with the total. 
You can change the appearance of the task manager and its general settings by selecting settings in the lower left. If you want to change the appearance of the task manager in app theme, your choices are use system setting. This will be the theme you have set in windows settings. Mine is set to dark, so it's using dark. You can manually change it to dark here. And the other choice is light. I'll switch that back. In general, you can choose the default start page that opens when you launch the task manager. You can change the real-time update speed. I use paused sometimes, which comes in handy when I want to take a screenshot of the processes tab. In window management, always on top, is useful to monitor the behavior of a specific program or game. And below that, there's other options. And here in advanced is live kernel memory dump options. This one really is for advanced users. A live kernel dump creates a consistent snapshot of kernel memory and saves it to a dump file without having to restart the computer. Thanks for watching. If this video was useful for you, give it a thumbs up and share it with others. These are just the tips I use with the task manager. If you have any others, let us know about them in the comments. And if you're new to our channel, subscribe and click the bell for the latest in Windows and other tech-related stuff here on Brett in Tech.